What could it look like to hear God clearly in our lives? We're starting a brand new series about it today. It's all about cutting through the noise and the clutter and being able to tune in to what God is saying. And I think for a lot of us, we may struggle with this idea that God really wants to speak to us, but I truly believe he does. So what would that look like? I want to share a story with you today from the Bible that's all about hearing from God. And it's a pretty crazy story, to be honest with you. But before we get to it, I want to share a little disappointment I've been having. See, I thought during this pandemic, we've been navigating our way through, you know, with all of the negative stuff and all of the pain and all of the uncertainty, that still somehow my life would get a little bit quieter. Maybe without being able to do all the things I usually do, I, I could hear the whisper of God more clearly. But to be honest, it's been just the opposite. I don't know about you, but I feel like my life has been even noisier lately. It's so hard to focus. There's so much chaos and confusion. And I have this problem that maybe you can relate to where I constantly tune in to the wrong channels, the wrong stations. I'm not dialed into the frequency that God is operating on. And I've been trying to figure out how to get connected to the stillness of God in this season. So there's this fascinating story in the Old Testament of the Bible about a prophet named Elijah and a king named Ahab. So Elijah is God's man. He doesn't care anything about what people think of him. He's not following the popular opinions. He just wants to please God. But Ahab, the king, He's a different story. He cares a lot about what people think about him. And even though he's leading a nation that's supposed to respect God, he's actually leading them right off the side of a cliff. See, they've all gotten obsessed with worshiping this false God named Baal. And their religion isn't pretty. It's violent, full of superstition. It's the opposite of everything God is looking for. So Ahab and Elijah have this showdown on a mountain. I mean, it goes down. Elijah shows up alone, but King Ahab brings 450 prophets of Baal along with him. And here's what happens. This is in 1 Kings 18. Then Elijah stood in front of the people and said, How much longer will you waver, hobbling between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, then follow him. So there's this line in the sand moment where Elijah says, Hey, it's time to pick a God. Maybe you've found yourself on the fence toward God. So here's the question today. Who are you going to tune your life into? Who's going to be your God? Maybe this season is kind of a line in the sand moment for you. It's a moment where you've got to choose where you're going to put your trust and who you're going to rely on. And it can't just be empty words. It has to be a serious declaration. So Elijah and Ahab, they're having this showdown on the mountaintop. There are all these prophets of Baal. And Elijah says this, Now bring two bulls. The prophets of Baal may choose whichever one they wish and cut it into pieces. That's pretty gross, but this is during a time of animal sacrifices. And he says, lay it on the wood of their altar, but without setting fire to it. I will prepare the other bull and lay it on the wood on the altar, but not set fire to it. Then call on the name of your God, and I will call on the name of the Lord. And the God who answers by setting fire to the wood is the true God. So not only does Elijah challenge this idea of worshiping a false God, but he puts his own God to the test. He steps up and he says, all right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to see who is really God. You guys call on your little G gods, and I'm going to call on the capital G God, and we'll see who answers by fire. You know, let's be honest. We all have some little G gods in our lives. We all have some false gods. Maybe our God is our ambition or our money or our career or our kids, or maybe our God is the two drinks that turn into three at the end of a stressful day. Maybe our God is whatever we're working really hard to control or keep in our lives. You say, well, why do you call those things gods? Well, it seems to me that whatever we seek to achieve or acquire the most, whatever we worry about the most, whatever we need the most to be secure, eventually becomes our God. 
Now, I'm not throwing stones because I've worshiped false gods before too. But there comes this moment where we have to decide who is truly going to be my God. See, here are the problem with some of those other gods. They're lifeless, hollow. Now, I don't mean our marriages are hollow or our careers are hollow or our kids or needs are hollow. I just mean they can become hollow and lifeless the moment we turn them into a God. See, many of those things or people in our lives make great gifts. They just make terrible gods. So maybe it's time to put our God to the test. Maybe it's time to admit that whatever or whoever we've been worshiping, we've been most devoted to, most obsessed with, that however valuable, important they or it might be to us, they're just not worthy to be our God. Maybe it's time to start turning our hearts toward the real God, not the God we've created, but the God who created us. Maybe it's time to really start listening to him. Then Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, you go first, for there are many of you. Choose one of the bulls and prepare it and call on the name of your God, but do not set fire to the wood. So they prepared one of the bulls, placed it on the altar, and then they called on the name of Baal, their pretend God, from morning until noontime, shouting, O Baal, answer us. But there was no reply of any kind. They danced, hobbling around the altar they had made. And about noontime, Elijah began mocking them. You'll have to shout louder, he scoffed, for surely he is a God. Maybe he's daydreaming or is relieving himself. Or maybe he's away on a trip or is asleep and needs to be wakened. So they shouted louder and following their normal custom, they cut themselves with knives and swords until blood gushed out. They raved all afternoon until the time of the evening sacrifice, but still there was no sound, no reply, no response. How many of us have tuned our lives into the wrong frequency and we're praying to a God who can't hear us, a God who can't answer? That's the moment these prophets of Baal find themselves in. I mean, they're increasingly trying to get their God's attention and there's no response. And they're engaging in all of these ritualistic practices and superstitions. And for all of us looking on, we might say, oh, I would never do that. But I wonder how many times without realizing it, we're praying to a God who can't answer. Oh, job, answer me. Oh, relationship, complete me. Oh, picture I had for my life, please respond to me. Now, I wonder how many times we think we're being faithful, but we're just being superstitious. And Elijah doesn't play nice in this moment. He's like, maybe, maybe your God can't hear you. You need to yell louder. Can you hear me now, Baal? I mean, you need to go to greater lengths. Maybe he's on a trip. Maybe he's in the bathroom scrolling through Insta. Like, whatever you got to do, get your God's attention. <laughs> it's a crazy moment. But again, I wonder for how many of us we without realizing it, drift into that place of superstition where we think if I just try harder, if I just, if I say just the right words when I pray, or if I, if I do everything just the right way, then maybe God will pay attention to me. Maybe the universe will align with what I want. Sometimes I think we even go through the motions of being a Christian. Like we do Christian stuff, but our hearts are far from God, just like the prophets of Baal. We worship, but we don't really mean the words. We give here and there, but it's out of obligation, not joyful surrender. Maybe we read the Bible, but it's more for inspiration than connection. Or we pray, but it's so that God will hear what we want, not so we can listen to what he wants. Is it possible that there's more superstition than faith in our spirituality sometimes? Superstition says, I'm going to try to manipulate God. Faith says, I'm going to trust God. Superstition says, I'm going to control my life. Faith is all about letting go of control. And superstition brings anxiety. I have to try harder, yell louder, work more, make it happen on my own. But faith is all about rest and security and trusting God. God doesn't want all my efforts to jump through all kinds of hoops to get his attention. He wants my faith. He wants me to trust him from the heart and then to declare that I trust him. So in this next moment, can I encourage you, get quiet with me, put all the distractions aside, and let what happens next in this story cut through the noise. Then Elijah called to the people, come over here. And they all crowded around him as he repaired the altar of the Lord that had been torn down. He took 12 stones, one to represent each of the tribes of Israel, and he used the stones to rebuild the altar in the name of the Lord. Then he dug a trench around the altar large enough to hold about three gallons. He piled wood on the altar, cut the bull into pieces, laid the pieces on the wood. 
Then he said, fill four large jars with water and pour the water over the offering in the wood. And after they had done this, he said, do it again. And when they were finished, he said, do it a third time. So they did as he said, and the water ran around the altar and even filled the trench. So Elijah rebuilds the altar of God and he puts a sacrifice on it, but he doesn't stop there. He digs a trench around it and he says, cover the sacrifice in water, pour it on, soak everything. Let the water fill the trench around the altar. Hey, does your sacrifice seem soaked right now? Here's what I mean. Does your situation seem impossible? Does it seem like some dreams have died and you can't resurrect them no matter how hard you try? Have you been working hard to stack the deck in your favor, but it seems like you're holding the worst cards possible? What hope seems buried in your life right now? Do you have a job you've been furloughed from, a business you had to close? Maybe a kid with special needs who can't get the therapy they need right now. That's our family's soaked sacrifice. Do you have a degree you're trying to finish online or a feeling of being overwhelmed you just can't climb over? Do you have a soaked sacrifice, something that looks like it could never live again, never catch on fire? What if that's not a bad place to be when God is in the picture? What if you see an impossible situation right now, a dying dream, a buried hope, but God sees the possibility of something amazing happening in your life. Elijah soaks the sacrifice and then he prays. He walked up to the altar and prayed, O Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, prove today that you are God in Israel and that I'm your servant. Prove that I've done all this at your command. O Lord, answer me. Answer me so these people will know that you, O Lord, are God and that you have brought them back to yourself. Immediately, the fire of the Lord flashed down from heaven and burned up the young bull, the wood, the stones, and the dust. It even licked up all the water that was in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell face down on the ground and cried out, The Lord, He is God. Yes, the Lord is God. Think about all the hoops we try to jump through to get the universe's attention. Elijah doesn't do any of that. He just has faith in his God, and that's enough. See, Elijah wasn't any different than any of us. He was as human as we are. We read in the New Testament that he was just like us, but he prayed earnestly to his God. Here's how we tune in to God's frequency for our lives. It starts with a declaration, an acknowledgement that he is God over every part of our lives, that he alone is in control. Nothing is too hard for him, and nothing is outside of his hands. Elijah didn't know everything that was about to happen next in his life. He just knew who God was, the real God. And he lived out of a place of faith in who God was. You see, Elijah knew that what God responds to is not all the hoops we try to jump through, but it's that place of faith, that declaration, the Lord, He is God. Wherever you are with your spiritual journey right now, I want to invite you to make the same declaration over every area of your life, especially the areas where you felt like you needed to control them. You felt like you didn't even know how to manage them and they had become, without you realizing it, almost a God in your life. Get them front and center right now and tell them you're not God, the Lord, He is God. Fear, you're not God, the Lord, He is God. Get that relationship or that financial situation or that medical issue that you're facing right now that has started to loom so large in your life that you couldn't see or hear anything else and make this declaration over it. The Lord, He is God. I'm not gonna live by fear, I'm gonna live by faith. I'm not gonna live in insecurity, I'm gonna live in confidence. The Lord, He is God. If you wanna tune into the frequency of God's voice, start there with this declaration, the Lord, He is God. For some of us, right here in part one of this series, there's a line in the sand. Who is our God? And how do we hear from God? Well, what cuts through the noise is faith. So we start with a declaration that He is God over everything. And then from there, we follow Him. We don't follow our own plans, our own ways. We follow God. And then we can walk up to soaked sacrifices, to dying dreams, 
to things that seem impossible, to areas of our lives that would take a miracle to ignite, and we can pray to our capital G God with faith. See, Elijah could pray boldly because he'd settled it. The Lord, he is God. It doesn't matter if the sacrifice is soaked. It doesn't matter if I'm standing here all alone. It doesn't even matter if he doesn't answer with fire. He's still God. You haven't been trying to get God's attention. He's been trying to get yours. And when you live in the power of one simple declaration where it's settled, your trust is in God alone, then you can begin to see God answer and work in ways you never could have come up with on your own. That kind of faith tunes us into the frequency God is broadcasting on. So right now, boldly declare over every area of your life, the chaos, the frustration, the loneliness, the soaked sacrifices, the unanswered questions, the buried dreams, the Lord, He is God. I believe it by faith. If up until now you haven't had a personal relationship with God for yourself, then let me ask you, who or what is your God? Because someone or something is. So how's that working out? Is your God doing a good job? Maybe it's time to fire our little G gods and put our trust in the capital G God. Elijah asked the people on the mountain that day, how long are you gonna waver between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. And if you wanna stop wavering today and put your trust in God, not in religion, not in superstition, but your faith in the God who created you, that means looking to Jesus. It means by faith you begin to follow him. And you can start right where you are today. I'd love to lead you in a very simple prayer to take that step. So if that's you, right where you're watching right now, with faith in your heart, pray something like this out. Jesus, today I give my life to you. I turn away from my superstitions and my sins, and I trust in you alone. By faith, I'm gonna follow you. You are leader and Lord of my life. God, you alone are my God. And if that's you today praying that prayer, I want you to know I'm celebrating that step with you. I wanna thank you again for joining us today. Make sure you take a moment, fill in that digital connect card on whatever platform you're watching on. And then let me ask all of us, how are we gonna to respond to the message? Maybe for you it's to take some time this week and practice a slot and spot, a time on your calendar and a place you go to listen to God, to get quiet and pay attention to His voice. Maybe for some of us the next step is serving. Faith starts with a declaration, but it has to move on from there. It's not just words. There comes a time when we've got to express our faith in action. Next weekend as we continue the series, we're gonna look at a moment in Elijah's life that's kind of the opposite of the one we looked at today. Today was a mountaintop experience when God showed up. But what happens when he doesn't show up quite like that? We'll see a crisis in Elijah's life when he feels like he's all alone, but then he finds out he's not. And here's a sneak peek, neither are you. We'll talk about that next week.